everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. We're really excited to share our end of June garden tour with you all. Um, a lot of you have been there with us from the very first video in the early spring when things were just starting to wake up from dormancy. So to see the progress from back in you know the end of March, early April to now the end of June uh, is pretty outstanding. So we're going to bring you along, kind of go through the different flower beds on our property in the front yard and the backyard, and you'll get to see, um, you know, the beautiful and the ugly and the good and the bad, because I think it's really important to not just show the beauty and success and abundance in gardens, but also um, be realistic. You know, gardening is a passion and it's a hobby and it's a, a career for a lot of people. Um, but it's also something that is just another aspect of your life, which means, you know, people are busy and um, there's weeds and things might not be picked up and that, that's all very realistic gardening. So we want to be super transparent with you guys. Both Ryan and I have teaching jobs and so we teach all day and um, it might, it's not perfect. And that's okay because we are growing our garden is growing and I hope that that gives you confidence in your own garden if you're looking around and saying oh this isn't perfect that's not done you know but -da -da. it's okay because things are growing and you're doing a really good job providing life so we are starting in our backyard in the courtyard and let's have some fun so right out of the gate, we're going to start with the ugly. Um, if you come in closer, you'll see that when we pruned this, we thought it was completely dead. All of these are dead. Um, we wanted to leave this up to show you guys what a quote unquote garden fail might look like and um, that it's okay. Roses are incredibly resilient and so the, they just shot up brand new um, canes straight from the um, roots, the base of the roots, and it's completely out of bloom now, but um, we will pop a picture of what the blooms look like when they're in bloom. You can also see all of the holes. So again, a common theme you're going to see with this garden tour is a slug um, pro problem. We don't really get earwigs here, but slugs are a thing that we deal with. So. Again, we'll link down our Captain Jack's um, bug and slug killer that we use to help remedy this. The plants are still alive, they're still doing great. Um, it's just more of an aesthetic with the leaves having little nibbles in them. So, we'll move on. This is an actual, um, a hydrangea, big leaf hydrangea that one of my students gave me. And it's beautiful. It's pink and it turns into a lime. Um, and it's really little right now, but it's but it likes partial shade. It's a partial shade um, hydrangea. So this is a perfect location for it um, because this spot in particular gets part shade. Same thing, we're gonna be pruning out all of these dead canes that the roses did not use. And you can see they shot up brand new canes from the base. So those are the brand new canes from this year. These ones are all done and spent, so we're gonna chop those off. And that's just normal maintenance in the garden. Again, normal maintenance, all of these um, spent phlox. This is a shady phlox, it's a white phlox. Um, we can just trim, literally just shear it back. So that's good. We'll pop a picture of what it looked like. We have our, um, Gertrude Jekyll roses out of bloom right now, but this transformation was amazing when it went from just the bare canes to then this beautiful, exactly what we were hoping for, a fan-shaped, um, picturesque pink rose. And the command strips have been holding up pretty well too. Yeah, to all of the summer rain and the heat, so that that's amazing. Those raffi clips are amazing. This. Bleeding heart bush is a beast. Bleeding hearts get really big. Um, it is out of bloom. In a future video, we're gonna be cutting this back and planting other things here. That's what we do with all of our bleeding hearts. You can leave it up, um, but when the leaves start to yellow, we cut ours back. 
Um, we had some volunteer sunflowers again in our courtyard. So these are the mammoth ones. These ones are getting huge. There's some here, all butted up, ready to pop, really. Our bleeding heart actually multiplied this season. So it's all the way over here and right underneath. And the the baby one is still in bloom. So we might not cut those back yet, but eventually, because you can see there there's some of them are itty bitty babies. So we might keep that one here. Our azalea. Um, is obviously out of bloom as well. They have like the hot pink azaleas in the early spring. Super easy to just take those off. Another volunteer sunflower. Our second rose, doing great. Our limelight hydrangea, doing great. You're gonna see our hydrangeas doing really well um, with that three bud pruning method that we did in the early, early spring. They responded so well to it. So well. Now was that the one that we transplanted from the shade bed, the corner of the shade bed? Yes. We've never seen it get this big. No. No. And this is the second season in this spot too, so it's gonna be getting big. Line lights get around six feet tall, so yeah. Um we have a fall flowering plant here. I'm I don't remember what they name name is, but they have pinnacle like white blooms. Um, they spend all summer getting really tall and then um, around August they start budding up and August through the end of frost we have white pentacle blooms so that's amazing. We, our, it's hard to see right now because the rose is out of bloom but our pink rose is doing great. Let's see if we can get it good. Yeah, and we also have a sunflower. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then we have a red right here. Peeking out. Our white echinacea is about to bloom. And we have our lemon coral sedum tucked in under there. It has expanded so much. It's grown so much. So that's our courtyard. Our red mandeville is looking amazing. We have our Silver Falls coming out. I don't think we've ever shown you guys our Silver Falls. This is also one of our favorites. It kind of shimmers. It's like a green, silvery. I hope you can see the shimmer in the video. But it's also like velvet to the touch. It is so soft. The leaves are so soft. Um, and it gets really long. And this is um, every year we get at least four of those. Our awesome Black Eyed Susan Vine containers are doing so well. They're starting to vine up and over already. Uh, the other one is very long on the other side. We're washing our cushion leaves, uh, our cushion covers at the moment. But look at how long this is. Ready to help train it up. Our herb garden, I don't remember if you guys remember how small this was when we started, when we planted it. Um, obviously it's grown significantly. And again, with these, when they start bolting with the amazel basils, you can just pinch them off. I have like a pile here going of these buds. And it does not affect their flavor at all. Ryan and I, Ryan and I just cut these leaves and ate them tonight with our dinner and it was amazing no bitter taste at all um, and you can just pinch off the blooms and keep going our thyme oregano and rosemary is doing great our cilantro um, bolted really fast in the heat and um, it's just a really hard year for cilantro I don't know if any of you had experienced that too I don't know if next year we need to put our cilantro in like a spot that gets more like shade so it's not getting so much sun and heat. I'm not sure. But it bolted very quickly. 
Um, and we have all the Did you hear a cat? Hey chat. It's like, wait a minute. Our dill is doing great though, it smells amazing. So now let's venture down. <laughs> Alright, so we ended up putting up a big trellis and starting another selection of the tangerine slice, the coconut appeal, and then we just picked up another lemon appeal to do kind of a same mirror effect as the hanging baskets with the black-eyed Susan Brighton that's on the back patio. Every year we get dill, volunteer dill in our garden, and again, just kind of like the green onions that we get in the front yard, we let them grow and then we harvest from them. Same thing with this. We We'll just let the dill grow and we'll harvest from it. Every year we get dill. Um, this bed exploded. It exploded, you guys. Yeah. We've been picking off of the sun sugar cherries, and as you can see, this one is ready to be picked. I just had to stake up our good hearted, proven winner's good hearted tomato uh, because look. Look at how much fruit is on this one bush. Like, oh, oh. it's insane. This is one. So. And that's how tall it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So, that's really exciting. Our strawberries, we've been picking daily off of these strawberry plants. Um, and just, you know, it's what I do when I come home. I come out and eat some strawberries. And they're so sweet. They taste so good. And the blooms are wonderful. I love having blooms. Our pepper bed, we discovered something. So with the compost that we put straight on top, I'm not sure if it wasn't cooked well enough or somehow grass seed got into it. But as you can see, there's a lot of grass seed here growing on top. So we um, ended up picking out most of it. We're gonna put new soil down. Um, but obviously the peppers are doing fine. Every everything's doing fine. We've harvested the peppers off of this one already. And as you can see, it's, I mean, they call it hot and heavy for a reason. It's weighing it completely down. Our jalapenos are doing well. Starting to grow. Our garden salsa. It's like tangled up. Are starting to grow. Our cucumbers, we have cucumbers. The, the Johnny Seeds ones are doing great. We also have a bunch of cucumbers that are growing. Almost ready to be harvested, actually. So also found out this is definitely not a bush cucumber, definitely a vining cucumber. But to be honest, we've always had vining cucumbers and we have not had very good luck vining them up. So we're having a great amount of luck with just kind of letting them do their thing. So maybe that's the answer. We have a couple Bartlett pears starting. There's more up there, I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, just wide spread, ocean spread of Lamia. This is our favorite ground cover. Lexi. Lexi. Yeah. This is our favorite ground cover to use, everyone. Lamia from Proven Winners. Um, just a blanket of beauty. <laughs> um, our blueberries doing great. These ones are almost getting to the ripening stage. And of course, our other one, our late summer bloom has not even, uh, our late summer blueberry has not even started yet. Um, so one thing again, you'll notice with our pear tree really quickly. One of like the most important things about pruning that top. That was also one of the very first videos that we did, is making sure we lock that top off because you can see how beautiful our neighbor's grapevine is. And we don't want to block the sun with massive fruit trees. So we just lock that off so that they can get some sun. 
our ombre. Supertunia Vista ombre is getting there. You can really see how um, the how the Supertunias want to drop their spent blooms. Remember these are self-cleaning. So they have the old blooms and they just will let go of them. So all of that will just let go and they'll fall. So I can't wait until this um, comes down more. Gravity will take it down more. We have a couple apples. Got some Granny Smith. Got a couple more down there. We did learn, we did do some research that um, pears and apple trees have like rest years where they'll produce an abundance one year and then um, really take a, take a couple seeds back the second year, like or the off year, um, to rest and develop roots and more um, leaf foliage. So we're assuming that this is a, a rest year because we're only getting like four or five pears and four or five apples, whereas before we got a lot. Um, so that was really interesting and something that we learned. So this is another amazing transformation. Um, I don't know if you can remember when we were using the command strips and the rappy clips to train this grapevine. Look at it now. It's huge, it's massive, and you can see all of the grapes coming together. They're everywhere. <laughs> so um, we're gonna have a lot of grapes this year. So these do have pits, um, and they taste very reminiscent of Concord fruit juice. So they're absolutely amazing. And right in front. Also, we just recently did this video, you all, and uh, look at how huge our squash plants are already. They love it here. We did pop in some snapdragons because it's so whimsical when we're in our kitchen and we're doing the dishes or making dinner and we look out and we see these snapdragons just blowing in the breeze. It's, it's really nice. Anyway, our... Um, Superbenas are also standing their own. Um, they're kind of growing in, which I might just correct that, I think. But um, they're doing really well. They love this spot. Zucchinis are doing great. Squash is doing great. Lots of buds. You're closed up for the night. Did you know that bumblebees and honeybees actually sleep in squash blooms? Yeah. It's so cute. Uh, we have carrots coming up and our sugar snaps. Doing great. I'm not sure if we showed you this before. We have strawberries and we're letting them shoot their runners because it would be amazing to have this entire kind of back area um, as a more natural strawberry bed. And these strawberries get really big. They're, they're a more mature plant. So the the berries are much bigger. So this is um, one of our shade beds. This is the other one we were talking about earlier. It does get some afternoon sun, but that's, and some really early morning light, but that's pretty much it. We're gonna be talking more about this a little bit later, but Ryan did an awesome job of leveling out everything, the ground and all of the bricks, making them nice and level, um, just to help more of the structure for this bed. There is some perennials in here already that we'll be talking about soon. Right here, this is the arbor that we got married under. It has a wisteria vine growing up um, right here, which is out of bloom at the moment. And then on the other side, we have our Japanese maple tree hanging out. Our shed, we have some other projects planned. Our Priscilla Super Tunias are doing great in these um, wicker baskets here. They're just coming up and over. So that's gonna be beautiful against the fence. This is one of our um, beds that we're gonna be working on, probably not this season at all, next season. We call it our garage bed. Beautiful tiger lilies. 
that clearly are loving their lives. Um, but the other bits are we. We have a crazy climbing red rose that also has problems blooming. I don't think it gets enough sunlight. Um, so we'll have to like get a huge trellis and trellis that up, help it um, just have a better success in blooming. So this is going to be a big project for next year, 2023. All right, our peach tree. So proud of this tree. Um, we did a pretty good prune on it in the early spring and it did battle a pretty good bout of leaf curl. Um, which it has seemed to self-correct. Um, we did spray it in the winter though. Yeah, just the, the winter, but all, it had the curl, it had peach leaf curl, but all of that is gone. Um, healthy leaves have pushed it out, and I come in here and look at how many peaches there are. So a lot of the times peach trees will drop um, peaches that are not strong enough. In fact, you can see some on the ground here. Just like the peaches that, they're just not gonna put, put um, work into growing. But there's a ton more that are just hanging on and ripening on up. So this should be a really great peach year. It's the most peaches we've ever seen. Yes, it's the most peaches we've ever seen. Can recall how much we brought this tree down. We lost it um, because we knew how big it gets, and it's already pushed all of that new growth up top. Of those lighter colored green leaves are new. Our cherry tree is doing great. It kind of looks like crazy to me. It like sprawls out. I'm not quite sure what it's doing, but um, hopefully with pruning. Actually, with pruning it, it has it looks better than it did, actually. And no bouts of aphids this year, yay. Um, right here you'll see a, just a line of plants that we have for upcoming projects for you all. We're really excited, sneak peek. So our dogwood tree is just coming out of the blooms. So you can see the blooms are kind of fading a little bit. It's kind of looking a little dirty and I'm dropping the petals. This is more of what it looked like covering the tree. We also pruned this tree. We didn't video it, um, but we pruned this tree hard. This um, early spring, hard. And uh, it really takes to <laughs> really hard pruning. And it's the most full of, of blooms that we've ever had on this tree so maybe that was helpful we did already do a video on this shade bed underneath the dog wood so we're going to skip showing you that um, we have some asters here perennial asters with this really delicate um, purple really light purple very beautiful bluish flower we have a lot of irises that came out of bloom we have some big, boldly ferns that I love. Our, I don't know if you remember, the hydrangeas in this bed and how far we pruned them down. Um, our limelight's doing great. This is what the incredible blush looks like. This is what I was talking about with how big this shrub gets and how heavy it gets with bloom. The first rain of the summer and it just flops. So um, it does, this one in particular gets plenty of sun and it has these beautiful, I mean, huge handful blooms that start this blush and then turn a really deep, oh sorry, start the deep mauve, that deep hot pink and then turn into this really pink blush. We have it kind of staked up a little bit, um, but it's still that when the rain settles on the blooms, it just, it's so heavy for it. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I still love it. It's um, more of a droopy um, effect, but that's okay. It's still really beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's move 
out to the driveway. We ended up putting up some just full sun hanging baskets, not in a video, just to kind of test them out in this spot because we've never had anything in this spot. This is super uh, meteor shower verbena, which is doing okay. It came like sprawled, but these new shoots are going in the direction that's supposed to. And then we have a Wedgwood Angelonia, which I love. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Okay. Y'all. Our monochromatic containers. Outstanding. So, obviously, the salvia is doing great. This is what I'm talking about with the calyx when they're out of bloom. They still look like they're in bloom. Obviously, the purple is beautiful. I did realize that we positioned these differently, which I which I kind of don't mind. The Superbina is just loving its life right up front, and it's in intermingled through everything. Um, it's overtaken the Lobularia there on that on this one. The Priscilla is doing great. Bordeaux obviously is amazing. But I'm just so impressed with the Superbina. It's holding its own against Bordeaux. That is really impressive to me. Because Bordeaux is a beast. Supertunia, Bordeaux is a beast. So to have this Super Supertunia Amethyst, this is sparkling amethyst, um, is really cool. Here's the other one. You can see that the Supertunia, uh, uh, the Bordeaux is up front more with Priscilla. But again, the super bean nut is intermingling so nicely with all of them. It's doing great. They're really happy. And look how big it is. It's already, you know, taking up the pot. It's crazy. It's crazy. So our veggie line, we already have, um, we already have some eggplants on both, on both pots. You, y'all, this, these grow bags, I don't know if they're magic. They could be magic. We have had such amazing luck with vegetables in these grow bags. I don't know if it's the really good drainage that they offer or um, just the big soil capacity for like their roots. I don't know. But we've always had amazing luck. Um, we already have bell peppers, obviously tomatoes, more bell peppers. Like we didn't even fill up the the whole bag, you know. I don't know. They're magic. Our romas are doing great. Look at this beautiful pink echinacea. Oh, just yeah. Loving its best line. And we're moving into our driveway bed. This one has a lot of patterns. Our limelight hydrangea standards. If you remember how much we pruned those back. It was pretty far and look at them. They're just so happy. Already budding up. Um, we're really excited. So our grasses are doing really well. Our lavender is about to bloom. Very wispy. Honeybees everywhere. Our butterfly bushes are also about to bloom. So you'll see kind of like the pattern. We have grasses, we have our lavender, we have butterfly bushes. Um, this is an example of our native yarrow that grows. And it's beautiful. I love it. This is going to be a hot poker. We have our Russian sage that's about to bloom. Our salvia, perennial salvia, is ready to be sheared back. That's going to be in a video soon. More lavender, more grass, another giant hydrangea, baptisia that's out of bloom. This was another lemonade, pink lemonade baptisia. Love the yarrow popping through. And then it kind of continues in that same pattern. We have Russian sage. This was the color of the salvia. Very matching. Really, it's 
matching the Russian sage and the lavender. And it just continues down the line. This is one of my favorite beds that we've done um, because of the amount of blooms that it gets. Look at how big these butterfly bushes are gonna get. They're gonna be pretty. And it is really one of my favorites of driving up and um, like in a month even, this whole bed is gonna be beautiful and driving into this with like all of these big blooms and the butterfly bush and the sage, it's just magical. So these are our simple arrangements that we did. I think it was our first flower video that we did with three plants in this arrangement. It was the over easy, super bell, um, amber, tangerine punch, I wanna say. But just this, these, those three plants just fill up and they're starting to overflow. They're going to be getting several feet do um, down. They're self cleaning, super balls are self cleaning. It's wonderful. We did just recently do an overview of this bed. We're going to do some deadheading soon, but everything is doing really well. The, uh, the perennial salvia is going to get sheared back. Our Wygela is still doing good, you guys. Even though the sunflowers. Sunflower takeover. Now remember, these volunteered themselves. We did not plant these. And look, I'm sure you all know, but just in case you didn't, some flowers actually will turn their heads to face the sun. So earlier, these were facing that way. And the whole head will turn to face the sun to get all of the sunlight that it can. So it's huge over here, right? Popped in behind is still a toucan canna coral. You can barely see, but it is still there and it is still pushing blooms. Barely. <laughs> and our Sun Credible sunflower is also back here. These ones are crazy on the side. This front flower bed is doing great. We did add some things. We popped some zinnias in and we popped some extra snapdragons in. Our dahlias are coming up. We only had one that didn't come up. I'm so happy. I was so worried about those tubers. Um, but they did, they did great. Our lobularia is filling out really nicely. Our tomato is huge. Again, these were also volunteer. These tomatoes were also volunteer. We did not plant them. And I don't know if you can see, but on the other side of our fence, we found another tomato. Also one on the other side. <laughs> There's a few. Yeah. So I did put some tomato cages around these to hopefully help. We'll see. Um, Violet Night's beautiful. I love how like it's kind of lighter purple when it starts out. But our dahlias are growing. I take obviously look. <laughs> no, it's okay. There's a few. I also miss them. Such is life. Cut back your tulips. Um, more zinnias, snaps, and then the rest of the dahlia. Okay, <laughs> so these sunflowers are significantly shorter than the ones on the other side. They did definitely have some strange leaf issue, which is interesting for sunflowers but they seem to be okay. They definitely have some kind of disease though, some kind of powdery mildew maybe. Ooh, I wonder if that's mites. Mmm, we should keep an eye on that. Okay, Toucan Can is doing great. Those sunflowers are Saturn, some critical Saturns are doing great. And this one looks a lot bigger and is also going to be awesome. Our Sunset Horizon Rose is beautiful as always. I'm trying to find a good orange. Alright, 
We have just recently done a video on this bed. Our echinacea is coming out that pink. You all didn't get to see that before. Pink. Um, the pentamen's coming out of bloom. So we'll be deadheading some things. Um, the bee bomb's coming out of bloom. So just some deadheading to do some maintenance. We did pop in some extra zinnias because we had them. We popped them in. Echinacea time, white. The, I'm really happy that the cosmos that we planted are, are um, doing well. I mean, the white ones especially are doing really well. Again, with these lilies, I don't know if, if they're gonna stay. They're beautiful as soon as they open, but as soon as they open, those bugs and those beetles, they just feast. And it takes away a lot of the aesthetic of the bed. We'll see. We'll see. Our grasses are doing great. Again, it's it's um that alternating texture, like the you can see the grass plumes, the plumes of the grass blowing in the wind. Um, it's just beautiful. I don't know if we've ever showed you this part either. We have our lilacs. We have three lilacs, the big mature one, and then we have our own two that we brought from our last property. We have um, our rose that we bought. It's out of bloom and needs to be deadheaded, but there's more bu um, buds getting ready. It's a very pale pink. Beautiful, beautiful show early spring with our quince this year. Um, really happy because we some I've heard that people have a lot of hard have hard time with quince, like getting them to bloom all the way up the um, branch. And our first couple years with it, it only bloomed like right at the bottom, and we were like, "What is happening?" Um, but this year, it got to about halfway. So I'm hoping we're turning a corner with it. But it's beautiful, like red, orange. Um, almost like double rose almost looking blooms. Our lamium, obviously. Keeping it. We have a viburnum tucked in here. <laughs> Swallowed. Yeah, we might we might move that to a sunnier location too. Um, Another butterfly bush, a different color. We love the butterfly bushes. We have our salvia bed. One perennial salvia and then two rockin' playing the blues. Are we missing a break? No, I think I hit it with the mower today. Okay. It's all discombobulated. It's okay. Um, our hibiscus, this is, so we did a, pr a perennial pruning video and we talked about you know pruning back the hibiscus to six inches and how it was the very last thing to break dormancy. They broke dormancy at the end of May, so it's been one month, and look at how much they've grown. So even though they are the very last thing to break dormancy, and you might think, oh, Rebecca, it's dead, it didn't come back. Nope, they are super hardy, they will come back. They are the very last thing, we're talking end of May, they come back. And look, they're already butted up. Buds are everywhere. And this is a dinner plate um, hibiscus, so the blooms are gonna get huge. Again, you can see the slugs. We are going to be baiting like crazy. Our honeysuckle's doing really well. Um, this honeysuckle had a crazy amount of aphids. Uh, we didn't know that it attracted aphids like that. So next year we will be doing our normal aphid um, prevention with our honeysuckle as well. And then our last tall, this is actually a climbing rose. Again, we're gonna be pruning out the dead, but it's a nice pink. Um, and it gets it gets really pretty too. All right, before we lose sunlight, um, it's beautiful outside right now. So that's another great thing about doing a tour in the evening. We have a um, clematis here. I don't remember the name of it. I will pop it up on the screen. Our favorite clematis ever. It's out of bloom right now. It blooms more in the early, late spring. This is the prettiest thing in the world. 
and we adore it. Doesn't look like much now, but holy moly, it was great. Hose link, check it out if you haven't already. Um, awesome hose system. We'll probably talk about it for many years to come. Uh, we have a black pearl hookra and those irises that we transplanted some of them. Rhododendrons, big bush uh, mature rhododendrons. Setting blooms for next season. Big pink. We love them. Obviously our cherry tree did amazing with the harvest. The birds really enjoyed it, but it was a really good harvest this year. And then this bed underneath is not completed yet, but we have those um, fall colored echinacea. So it's a mix. So it has pinks and oranges. It has yellows and reds. And then we have some more um, hookahs. And we need to cut back the <laughs> tulips. And right above, you can see how amazing the above and beyond hanging baskets from Proven Winners that we put together, that recipe, um, they're doing. They're incredible. So those are in those um, Keter Rattan hanging baskets. A great big deep reservoir. And what I also liked about, and I know a few of you ordered them, what I liked about these hanging baskets too is when you um, water, the drainage is really great. So it starts seeping from all over, not just the bottom. So like just really, really good training. So hopefully, I mean, obviously they're loving it. We have some fuchsias hanging behind them because they like a more shaded area. Um, and then we'll show you the other hanging about our shade, our part shade. So our railing ones are doing fantastic. The vinca vines are awesome. The spikes, we love this area. Spikes we're finding are very um, strong plants, just like structurally, but just hardy. They're not bothered by anything. They don't wilt or like show signs of stress. So that's fantastic. And the geraniums are doing great in this area. Yay! Um, pushing blooms and looking great. We love it. Right up here was one of our baskets with the sweet potato vine in the back. We have our chiffon, some of chiffon. Lemon slice. We'll pop a picture of um, the other side of what it looks like as well. The orange themed one was the peachy keen. We had another potato vine. I don't know if that was tangerine punch. And the orange begonia up there. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on this journey. Ryan and I are actually really excited that you all are coming along and so many of you have started from the beginning and got to see the transformation of this garden. And so it, it means a lot to us that you are watching and kind of traveling with us on this journey. So we really hope that you got to see all of the progress that's being made and some obvious things that we need to work on as well. Some maintenance stuff and some garden fails. You know, we've talked about that myth before. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, it would mean so much to us. And I hope you're having a wonderful weekend.